Did somebody say four? We're out supporting the Craig Felton Memorial Golf Tournament at Emerald Greens this week and to help us honor Mr. Felton, a former South St. Paul teacher and golf coach who lost his fight with cancer in 2017, Packer alum Alex Stalock and brother of Craig, Tim Felton, will be joining us. That full interview with Alex can be found on our YouTube channel, which you should already be subscribed to. And give a rating too as we continue to grow and help our sponsors because as always, all of this episode content is presented by Soda Stick, brought to you by Better Edge, Jim Beam, and State Farm Insurance agent Tony Hoagland at champlininsurance.com. This is episode 86. Hat lovers rejoice. You can grab your own custom color and design Bard on Beauty's cap, courtesy of our friends at sodastick.com. Naturally, in addition to the top tier Buttes gear, sodastick.com has you covered for every Minnesota sporting swag flavor. Snag 15% off all purchases with code Bard on Beauties at sodastick.com. At Jim Beam, they know the importance of tradition, like chanting let's play hockey prior to the start of each game, or playing the state of hockey anthem after a wild win. This season, raise one to your fan family with the bourbon that invites us all to come as friends and leave as family. Jim Beam Bourbon Whiskey, the official bourbon whiskey partner of the Minnesota Wild and XL Energy Center. Remember, drink smart. Jim Beam Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey, 40% alcohol by volume, copyright 2021, James B. Beam Distilling Company, Incorporated, Kenamon, Kentucky. Hello, everybody. We're back. Episode 86. I'm Jesse Pierce. That's Alexis Pearson. Off the camera, Fred Vinefurt, who is uh, mastering the soundboard, trying to master the soundboard. We're gonna, we're just gonna toss it out there, Fred. We're gonna <laughs> fire you, even while you're on the show, because <laughs> we had a little glitch in audio with Mr. Alex Salak, who I'm sure you guys were all very excited to see. Which was not Fred's fault, but we have to blame. Somebody. But we're gonna blame Fred. Hey, yeah. If it wasn't for me, this board wouldn't even be plugged in. True. So this is true. just saying. This is true. That's true. Just saying. But it would have been the same recording with Alex <laughs> as we have now. So, um, no, we do have a great video video with Alex. He will be a part of this episode, not a part of our audio, just because we have high standards for ourselves. I mean, in the uh, in the podcast, I don't have standards outside of the podcast. And other people have as standards Russians for have us noted. too, which we have to live up to. So yes. Just, so yeah. go to our YouTube channel, <laughs> check that out. Some really a lot of fun with Alex um, talking about Craig Felt and what he remembers him as a teacher, because that's where we're out here. Alexis mm-hmm. has a personal connection with the Feltons um, yeah. as well, if you want to tell folks yeah. a little bit about that. Yeah, we, uh, we do talk about it a bit with Tim Felton, who joins us for the interview segment uh, in just a bit. Um, but yeah, Craig Felton uh, was my dad's best friend. Our families grew up together. Um, one of his daughters is my age, and he has a younger daughter who's my sister's age. Um, so I've known his family um, for my whole life. My dad and him worked at a grocery store together when they were younger, and that's how they met, and the rest is history. So um, obviously it was a, a tough year, and it had been tough ever since when, my, when uh, we lost Craig. Um, had a battle with cancer, and um, we have found a way to honor him now with this golf tournament that we've been doing for a few years which has been great every single year I think I've been to all of them uh, one way or another um, but this year they invited us out uh, the Bardown Beauties podcast to come record a show out here which we always say we're so humbled and honored anytime so anyone humbled. wants us anywhere we're like yeah. really okay thanks and <laughs> we love being out on a golf course yes. so on a beautiful day too can't complain about a day like this so nice to see uh, some friends and family a lot of faces I haven't seen in a while uh, partly because of the pandemic probably because I just <laughs> haven't seen them in a while um, but a lot of smiles today and nice to see a lot of people uh, who mean a lot to me. So uh, thank you to everybody who is listening to this episode. That means a lot to me as well. Um, and thank you to Fred and Jesse for coming out on this day too. Thanks for having us. Yeah. We, we absolutely love it. And again, thanks to Mr. Stalock for mm-hmm. earlier joining us. One more reminder, go to YouTube. <laughs> Check it out. He is a part of this, I and promise. And subscribe while you're there, damn it. Subscribe. Just do it. Comment. <laughs> tell us what you like. Um, we've got hockey to talk about because yeah. we're a hockey podcast and why not. Um, ready, Fred, again, this is where you need to add in the... Capri Soft watch. He did add it in last time, by the way. I didn't see it. No, I, he didn't, I, I said. I didn't oh, I know. Yeah. I know. You're going to do it this time, though, maybe? I can try to do it for you, mm. Jesse. <laughs> Capri Soft watch. Fred doesn't want you any do it extra for me. work. You do it for me. <laughs> Capri <laughs> Soft watch. <laughs> How many times um, can you make him have to do it? <laughs> Capri Soft watch. <laughs> Just going to make Fred's life a living hell in this, ep- this episode today. So so one of these times I am going to do it, and you're like, whoa. whoa <laughs> so much. aggressive. It's going to be so Zoom in on my face. It's going to be so great. I'm so excited. Can you do the thing where you like zoom in and the head spins? Yeah. <laughs> That's what I want to see. Explo- 
explosions <laughs> in the background. Pew, pew, because Twitter world was on fire oh this God. week. Um, you know, I did my vibe check after news dropped that there is a potential deal in place for Kirill to sign um, a one-year contract in Russia. Uh, that season would start on <laughs> September 1. I love how um, you said that so slowly, like you're still trying to process Still it trying to figure this out. <laughs> like, it's, I'm convinced, it is just a, it's a tactic. It's literally the only negotiating tactic that they have right now that yeah. Kirill's camp has. And I, I don't believe it to be anything the Wild fans need to worry about. I mean, the, the only concern is how far aw- away Bill Guerin and Kirill remain as far as settling a contract. I, but I knew it was going to take a while for them to come to an agreement. This actually hurries it up a little bit, yeah. I believe, because he has to decide by September 1 if he is, in fact, going to stay in the KHL and, and do that. Um, otherwise, he has until December 1st to decide whether he wants to sign with the Wild or if he's going to sit out the year. So, Lexus, your takes. Yeah. Um, also, the the article that came out about it, first of all, Frank Saravalli, Saravelli, since whatever his name is, needs to stop ruining everybody's day. <laughs> I'll literally just be, like, enjoying my day, and here comes Frank with some <laughs> bombshell on Twitter. I'm like, why do you always have to do this? Like, can't you just let us live. Um, I was at the beauty league when it happened and I had people like come over to me in the yeah. media like Jesse. And I'm like, I know I saw it. I know. I don't know. I, I don't have any had DMs. Like, can you explain this? I'm like, do I look like his agent? Yeah. First of all, no, I can't explain it. Um, but in the article, it said that like, um, Garen hasn't reached out to, or hasn't given him an offer since April. And I'm like, is that true? Because if that's yeah. true, that's, that's kind of ridiculous. And if it's not true, that's kind of ridiculous that you're saying that. So yeah. I don't know. The whole thing was stressful. I think ev- a lot of people took it as like oh my god he's going back to the KHL and it's like no if he doesn't sign here this is what his offer is going to be there so get a move on it we're all sick of waiting um I know Aaron the the person who runs the wilds twitter is on vacay this week seems like prime time to make something happen because mm-hmm. stuff always happens when you're least expecting it so get <laughs> shout on out that. to Aaron enjoy <laughs> shout your out vacation to Aaron. <laughs> but not really have fun in Nashville we miss and, you and also shout out to like Russo did you yeah. actually listen to his podcast this past weekend um I I heard snippets of it I mean it's just interesting how he the agent for is trying to play off Russo to get to the wild. It's the oh. whole thing is messed it's up. Like Russo admitted that he reached out to him and was like, look, we need the wild to think that this is a real offer right. for our negotiations. Yeah. Russo's like, I'm not doing that. I'm yeah. not an intermediary between you and the team. <laughs> yeah. right. Go away. So the media that can't so Frank, for instance, gets to be used as that right. pawn instead. I mean Congrats, Frank, you well, got played. And each team in the KHL only has a fourteen million dollar cap. Yeah. yeah, so and if you guys missed it, <laughs> and they're paying they said 10 of they it. would pay <laughs> yeah, an eight figure salary, which would be ten million yeah. or more. So I mean, it is. It's it's a tactic and hey more power to him I think the also other kind of thing that might hurt is how are fans viewing Kirill Kaprizov now throughout Poorly, all of this which right? they shouldn't yeah, it's like, not good. him it's, it's not it's him. not him it is I'm convinced it's his agent and it I know is. our Russian fans who we again adore have said that like yeah. this isn't Kirill this is his agent this is his agent trying to position themselves in a more favorable way um I've seen you know, people so. saying like Kirill needs to step in it's like what is he gonna really do like I he's mean, too I busy wrestling bears and lifting tires, tires in the rain like that was the only thing that Get video was back. missing was a bear <laughs> wrestling at the end no, of it of Honestly, him just carrying tires. The whole ridiculous. thing is just messed up, and it's not Kirill's fault. It's it's his agent doing this, and that it that's just how it is. And I keep seeing people like they're acting like it's Kirill who's like demanding all of this stuff. They're like, does he really want more of a, a salary than Alex Ovechkin and Braden Point and all? He's played fifty five games. It's like, yeah, Kirill is not his agent. That's what his agent is for is to negotiate these things, and he's not doing a very good job of it. And he's making a lot of people angry. So I've already seen some people like tweeting funny stuff like how are you gonna apologize to Kirill when uh, he finally gets a big deal and you're all happy and it's like yeah you better apologize because y'all have been some assholes so you better stop with that but doesn't the buck stop at Kirill it's his reputation and you need to stand on top of your reputation does anyone hate Artemi Panarin yeah well (laughs) (laughs) I mean yeah but I I do I think I think he's still kind of, he's young. He's 24. I think he doesn't recognize maybe what is being, and he tunes out a lot of oh, this I'm too, sure. you know? So I think he maybe doesn't recognize the situation because it is, he's letting his agent handle it. I see more and more players that have been taking that approach where they yeah. really aren't as involved because it, we're paying an agent to do it. Let him right. do it. Let it, he'll do what's best for me. And, and yeah, I mean, I don't, I've never gotten the sense that Kirill is money hungry by any no. means. I've never gotten the sense that this is really powered by him in the background. Um, but, you know, Fred has a point. He could probably step in and just say, hey, 
I just want to get Please a deal done. I just want to play <laughs> hockey, right? Yeah. I think at the end of the day, he wants to play hockey. And, yeah. and I, again, the concern for him going to the KHL isn't there for me because he wants to play in the NHL. It's yeah. clear. It's, the, the KHL is a fine league, but the NHL is a premier, premier league. I actually had this question on NPR where it was like, do you see the KHL now putting themselves in a better position to get more players? And no, I don't think so. I mean, I think players from Russia want to go play at home. That's that's fine. Yeah. It'll always be there. And, and it's, again, a great a great league. I'm not going to deny that. But I think Kirill wants to play in the NHL, wants to win cups. I think he just is, you know, trying to figure out the best way to do that. And, again, the Wild haven't necessarily positioned themselves in a in a place where it's very like, yep, we're going to win a cup next year. Yeah. You know, they're, they're in kind of this intermediate area. So Kaprizov watch. Starts. One more. <laughs> Kaprizov watch. <laughs> Starts. It, it continues. Uh, we will have a decide deciding factor on Kevin Fiala arbitration. Oh yeah, on August seventeenth. <laughs> that's coming up. I'm here keeping you <laughs> in like the NHL. Away. No. Yeah, coming Jeez. coming into an end. So that'll be really nice to see what happens. Again, that was determined by the Minnesota Wild. They were the ones that decided to take him to arbitration. So. Again, we're at a golf course. Carts, please. They're about to get going <laughs> on at this Memorial Golf Tournament. So that's uh, the voice you heard. They're not part of our podcast. But <laughs> yeah. And enjoy joining it. us now. <laughs> and joining us now, yeah. And the only other real thing I wanted to talk about this week was uh, Zach Parisi. Still without a home officially. I mean, again... We talked about the connection with the Islanders. It sounds like that's going to be the landing place. Um, I actually caught up with Brock Nelson, a War Road native and current Islander at the Beauty League. Um, and he said, yeah, we'd, it'd be great to have Zach. He hasn't really heard anything. Yeah. Alexis, is it concern? I mean, do you think Zach's kind of freaking out? Or do you think Probably. it's just a matter of, <laughs> I've heard it's just a matter of paperwork that needs to get finished. But time uh-huh. has passed since free agency had opened and he's still not with I, I'm sure he is. I'm sure he is. I mean, he obviously has a high desire to still play in the NHL. I, there was no indications in in anything that he ever said or really did that he didn't want to play anymore, right? And I think he still believes he can play at a high level. Now, mm-hmm. whether that is true or not is to be determined. We'll see where he ends up and what he's able to do with that team. Um, but I, I don't. I, I I think the fact that he's not signed anywhere yet is probably stressing him out. Like most, play, I mean, most players do get a little nervous when time starts to tick. You're like, oh boy, no one's picked me up yet. No one's signed me yet. Like, am I going <laughs> to land anywhere? Alex Daylock. Was Alex Daylock. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, so it's yeah. I'm sure he's concerned, but at the same time, probably not worried because. Because I think he knows his worth and that some team will take him. Um, I mean, you never know with Lou Lamarillo. That dude is a wild card. I mean, he probably heard you say that Zach Preezy is going to go there and has already canceled He the sensed deal. it. He's yeah. got like a spidey he sense about papers. it. He's like, mm, nope, sorry, Zach. Couldn't do this to you twice. Jesse and Hastings on Friday morning <laughs> said that Zach was coming to the Islanders. Not happening. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, yeah, I'm curious to see when that kind of gets yeah. resolved. I, I Best of luck to Zach. I mean, I bet Zach Parisi lands somewhere. You know where this is heading. BetterEdge.com. B-E-T-T-R Edge.com. You'll get a free $10 when you use code Buttes. Also really cool. They actually now feature Bar Down Beauties on their app. So go check them out. They are great people. Great app. And you win some money. Who mm-hmm. doesn't like to do that? Or lose some money. Or lose some money. I always win. Alexis can lose the money. I'll, I'll definitely win it. So go check out Better Edge. B-E-T-T-R Edge.com. And that pretty much does it, though, for our news segment. Again, we've got more Hockey Talk with Alex Daylock over on our YouTube channel. You'll hear a snippet of him in here, but really it's catching up with Tim Felton, mm-hmm. honoring Craig's memory at this Memorial Tournament. So stay tuned for that episode, or for that uh, interview. rather. Um, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. It might be the off season, but that doesn't mean you can't still shop Bard on Beauty's apparel. Get yourself a tank to add to your summer wardrobe or a Bard on Beauty sticker to slap on your water bottle to stay hydrated in the summer heat. Whatever you want, we've got it all at our Bard on Beauty's Teespring store. We're back. Joining us now, one of our absolute favorite human beings, Alex Daylock. Al, how you doing? I'm doing good. Thanks for having me out here, and obviously it's uh, for a great cause, so... Uh... No better place to be than on Friday afternoon. <laughs> You're a proud South St. Paul Packer, oh, yeah. you know, yeah. you got to love that. Tell us a little bit about Mr. Felton. You said he followed you all the way up. You guys uh, <laughs> Well, I don't think up. he necessarily followed me. I think <laughs> he, he followed our class. I wasn't uh, the greatest student, um, <laughs> but uh, I love going to school, just being around our, you know, your group of friends or whatever it was. And um, I think it started in seventh grade. We had a class with him. It was like a general science class. And we spent a lot of time in detention. I know he'd always he always put your name on the board, and then you just add 15 minutes and add yes. 15 minutes and add 15 minutes. And I swear, like there was like four of us by the end of the year. We had like four hours and 15 minutes of uh, detention built up. But I think it was just his way of wanting to like hang out with that crew of people after class. You know, nice. 
And so then we go up, you know, ninth grade, and we had them again. And sure enough, we build up the tension. And I felt like <laughs> all the way to senior year, we always had him as a, as a teacher, and he spoke at our commencement. And um, you know, he was kind of always that teacher that, mm. whatever it may be. And um, you know, it was uh, it was always a fun class. We had a music appreciation. Yeah. I don't know if you guys remember yeah. that, but he, he got he got a kick out of that, and he kept it fun. And that yeah. was the biggest thing that that we enjoyed. And I think our class we we enjoyed having fun, so he was a perfect fit for us. Joining us now is Tim Felton, brother of Craig Felton, the um, person who we are out here for for this tournament today. Um, Tim, you uh, are Craig's brother. You helped found the, this tournament and pull this together year after year. And uh, another year, here we are, another tournament. Uh, how much does this mean to you to have ha come up with this idea to do this and then see these people come out year after year? South St. Paul is a pretty tight-knit community, and days like today, I'm always reminded of that because we see all these people out here uh, that we grew up with, went to school with, coming out uh, for a great cause. Well, first of all, thanks for being out here. All you guys, this is wonderful to do. And um, it, it obviously means a lot to us. I was just telling somebody the other day that this is kind of a, a, a bittersweet success that we're doing here. I'd, I'd much rather he be here right now. and, and Golfing with and, us, and, right? right <laughs> and then just write a check for a, a charity somewhere, right? Yeah. I, I'd much rather do that. But this has been a, a tremendous thing that the family has done. And as you know, your dad was a instrumental part as well, Alexis. So um, Craig, a lifelong resident of South St. Paul, mm -hmm. teacher at the high school, voice of the Packers, golf coach, yep. soccer coach. And and it's just, uh, it's great to see everybody come out here and support this cause, this, this, and we developed a, an endowed scholarship mm -hmm. in his name. And that's why we're here. And 100% of our proceeds go to that. And it's, it's a wonderful thing to do. Well, and you got another beautiful day for it. So can't complain about a day like today. And, uh, you know, we, we talk about being a South St. Paul Packer and, you know, what that means. And I think even though South St. Paul is such a small town and, and all of that, whenever I think about where I came from, I think about the community of what it is. And like I said, kind of how we get to this point today to be able to do something like this and have all of these people show up and want to be a part of this. Uh, I'm sure you didn't have to pull many legs to get people to come out and golf. No, no, we didn't. <laughs> we just kind of sent out the email and all the invitations and it filled up pretty quickly. And again, and we see a lot of the same faces and some new faces, which is great to see. And, and we hope to keep doing this. I had a goal. People say, how long are you going to to do this my goal and it sounds a little lofty <laughs> is to get a million dollars in that scholarship fund that would be wonderful so I'm gonna keep doing it until um, we get that tell us a little bit about what kind of person your brother was you know describe <laughs> describe him if you can Alex Daylock said he was just the most fun loved to hang out with his talk to his everybody students, talk to everybody <laughs> yeah yep he, he he was a teacher in South St. Paul and he used that to uh, befriend the kids and just became their teacher first and he had to be you know a disciplinarian but at the same time he was their friend they could talk to him and and he touched the students on a personal level like Al is a classic example I think he developed a relationship with Al and then uh, enough so where Al ended up sending him one of the helmets that he broke in a game somewhere <laughs> he sent it to Craig and um, but he was just really personable with the kids and that's what he wanted to do and everybody knew him in South St. Paul and like I said this is a this is a bittersweet thing to do, mm -hmm. um, but I, and he was just a wonderful guy, and we miss him a ton. Yeah, and uh, why golf? Because uh, we host golf tournaments for lots of stuff, right? Um, but this one is extra special because golf meant a lot to, to him and to the entire Felton family. Um, his love of golf was unparalleled, uh, so tell, tell people a little bit about him. I, I told Alex when we talked to him, I said, you know, uh, the one thing I remember, not the one thing, but at the top of the list is he was always out in the hallway holding an iron and just taking swings randomly in the hallway. Um, golf was like his, his favorite thing in the whole world, right? Yep. He, he developed that as a passion <laughs> and it, I don't think he was the best golfer around, <laughs> but he was a stickler for the rules. Yes. That was, that was <laughs> what he did and, and he would quiz all his players on the rules and he didn't care how you golfed as long as you did it by the rules and you, you obeyed the rules. That was what he was all about but no he loved golf um like i said he golfed with your father yep. jim a lot and he would sleep in a lot of times in the summer until noon or one o'clock but if he had a tea time he always was up there like at 5 <laughs> always so, there yeah so it was important he just enjoyed it yeah and that, that's why we wanted to have this this golf tournament that it's a great way to raise money for a scholarship mm -hmm. but it meant a lot to craig and so we thought what 
better way to do it. Yeah, that's funny because my dad would always say that about Craig. Well, I called him coach because Jesse and Fred don't know this, but he coached me in soccer and his daughter Jenny our entire lives growing up. So I always called him coach. Mr. Felton and Craig were not in my vocabulary. But um, yeah, my dad would always say he's like, because coach loved to sleep in. He would sleep in until like noon, one o'clock. Like that was his MO, right? And my dad always said, he's like, but if we had a tea time, he was always there because that's how much he loved golf. He would be there whatever time it was, ready to go um, because it didn't matter. That was, that was his favorite thing to do. Well, your dad just told me a little story that when it was <laughs> coming time to decide where to maybe go to school or whatnot, um, I think he said that he talked to you guys and said, well, coach teaches at yep. South St. Paul, uh -huh. so you can go to South St. Paul. Yeah, he made me take physics because he taught it. I didn't want to take physics. I was like, I want no part of that. I, it doesn't sound interesting. He's like, you're taking that class because coach teaches that class. And I was like, fine. So sorry, coach. I, I probably wasn't the most pleasant student to have because I didn't like it, but he made it fun. I, I bet there were quite a few students that took maybe the sciences. Just to have him. Just maybe have him yeah. as a teacher. And it was well worth it too. Absolutely. Well, thank you for chatting with us about this tournament. We are always honored and humbled to be invited out to stuff like this and to Today, this one means a little extra special to me and my family, as you know. So thank you for inviting us out, and uh, good luck to everyone golfing today. And may it all go well for you guys. Thank you very much for being here. Thanks. Hey, guys, this is producer Fred. I just wanted to ask everyone to go out there and spread the word about Bar Down Beauties. Leave us a like, share, thumbs up, review. You name it, we want to hear from you. Find us on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and, of course, your favorite podcast app. Thanks again to Mr. Stalock and Tim Felton and to Alexis and her family for having us out at the Greg Felton Memorial Scholarship Golf Tournament today. We had a blast. Again, another reminder, go to our YouTube channel to check out all of Mr. Stalock's interview. Those darn gremlins got us in the technology <laughs> and Fred is fired as a result. So that's uh, one of gonna, us had to go. One of us had to go and it wasn't going to be me or Alexis. So that's going to do it for this week's episode. As always, be sure to rate, subscribe on audio and on, on YouTube. Shout out to Talk North for featuring us on their lovely network. Cheers to Jim Beam for having us or having them as a sponsor, as well as Better Edge, B E T T O R Edge dot com, who now features our podcast on their app. So be sure you to uh, check that out. Give them a, a like and a love. Also, a free $10 when you use code Butes, B E A U T S, to bet on MLB or soccer, football, whatever it is that you want to do. Shout out to SodaStick.com, our presenting sponsors. Bar Down Beauties will get you 15% off all purchases. And shout out to Tony Hoagland at StateFarmInsurance.com. Again, that's going to do it. Have a great week, guys. Uh -huh.